Good day everyone. So welcome to another physics class. So we're in, we are going to discuss today torque. But what is torque? What is the equation for torque? Okay, so let's start. Now when we say torque, it is the effectiveness of a force exerted which will cause the rotation. If there is a force exerted at a certain distance from the axis of rotation and that rotates, that means that there is a torque exerted. Then torque is also described as the cross product of the force and the distance. So you have here, torque is F cross D, that is also the same as F, D sine theta. So recall, in getting the components of the force, if you have here the angle between the force and the distance is theta, if we have F D sine theta, that means we get the perpendicular force, or we get the component of the force which is perpendicular to the distance or the lever arm. So that is torque. Looking at the equation, we have torque equals F D sine theta, wherein the unit for force is newtons, and then the standard unit for distance is meter. So the torque, the unit for torque is newton meter. Okay. Now let's try to apply that in biomechanical systems. We have here different classes of levers. We have for the first class lever, wherein you can see here in the illustration that the fulcrum is at the center, and then you have the load and the force exerted on both sides. And then again, the fulcrum is located at the center. That is first class lever. For the second class lever, you can find the fulcrum or the axis of rotation on one side, and then at the center between the force and the axis of rotation, it is where you can find the loads. For the next one, for the third class lever we have here, again, the axis of rotation or fulcrum is located on one side, and then at the center, you have there the force exerted, and on the other side, you can find there the loads. So those are the three classes of lever, which is, of course, related to rotation and torque. So you can see here in the illustration, different classes of lever, which is applied in the bi biomechanical systems. From this one, the masseter joint, from the heels, or the heels, the muscle system, it involves rotation. Now, wh what I want you to do is try this one. Try to stand up and then reach your toes. Then the next thing that I want you to do is to stand up with your heels against the wall and then try to reach your toes. And of course, you will topple over. So why? Okay, now let's discuss that. When you try to reach your toes, you're able to bend your body so that the center of gravity, which is found at your belly button, then you try to reach your toes, that center of gravity lies within the area of support, which is your feet. But for the second condition, wherein your heels are against the wall, and then you try to reach your toes, you can see in the illustration here that the center of gravity now doesn't lie within the area of support. So it, now, if you are going to draw a straight line, it's no longer within your feet. Okay, you will topple over or you will rotate because now there is a force which is exerted away from the axis of rotation and then you will rotate. Unlike in the first condition, your center of gravity, the force still lies within the area of support. It's still within the axis of rotation, so it will not rotate. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, now let's take a look at the torques involved in muscle system. I want you to look at the illustration here. You can see here, at this point, okay, we have there the pivot or the fulcrum and then the muscle force. So you can see there the effort or the force exerted by the muscle, which is away from that axis of rotation or away from that pivot point. Therefore, there is rotation caused by the effort of the muscle. And then you can see here in the illustration also that there is a load placed. So if there is a force exerted there, since there's a load, that is also exerted away from the axis of rotation or away from the pivot point. Therefore, there will also be rotation. All right, to illustrate it better, if you have here, okay, there, you have here the load. There is a load exerted here, so there's a force downward, so it can rotate. But 
you are trying to, or the muscle here is trying to exert another force so that this one will still be balanced. So this is downwards. Okay, this, the muscle is upwards. The muscle force is upward. And then the pivot point is here. So if we sum up the torques produced by the loads and the force exerted by the muscle, they are in equilibrium. Now that is also related to our posture and to back pains. If you have this posture like that, your center of gravity still lies within the pivot point of the body. So they are in the same line. That means there's no torque produced by the center of gravity. Therefore, the muscle doesn't have to exert a counteracting force to balance you. But if looking at the other illustration, if you are somehow bent like that and the posture is not correct, the center of gravity now is away from that pivot point. If it's away from that pivot point, that means now that it will produce rotation. The center of gravity will somehow produce rotation. But our muscles at the back has to counteract that rotation to keep the body balanced. So it has to exert an effort. That's why we are experiencing back pain if the posture is not correct. So from this, at this point, make sure that the posture is correct and the center of gravity lies within the pivot point of the body so that you won't experience back pain, okay? Same with lifting an object. When you try to lift an object, according to the first illustration, you can see there that the load is really away from the pivot point. If the load is really away from that pivot point, that means it will cause great rotation. And that has to be counteracted by the muscles at your back. So it should exert a force so that you will be balanced or to keep your balance. Therefore, you will experience muscle pain or back pain. But when you try to lift an object, according to the second illustration, still, there is a distance away from the pivot point. However, the distance is small. So there is only a smaller distance and torque is dependent on the distance to where the force is exerted. Torque is minimal. Therefore, the force that the muscle has to exert is also minimal. Maybe you will still experience back pain, but not that much when you try to lift it according to the first illustration, okay? So when you try to lift an object, do it according to the second illustration, okay? Now let's talk about stability and toppling over. You can see in the first illustration that the center of gravity of the object still, when you draw a straight line, it still lies within the area of support. So it will not topple over. The Leaning Tower of Pisa, it's leaning, but it doesn't fall over because still the center of gravity still lying within the area of support. Looking at the second illustration, you can now see here that the center of gravity is somehow away from the pivot point and it's no longer lying within the area of support. Therefore, that object might topple over because the center of gravity is no longer supported, okay? So make sure that your center of gravity is always supported so that you will keep your balance. Okay, here are series of illustrations about the center of gravity. The center of gravity, our center of gravity can shift. If a man carries a boy, the center of gravity is somehow shifted because of the additional load. In the second illustration B, the center of gravity also shifted because of the added load. And for letter C, the center of gravity is still added or is still shifted because of the added load. Now, if you will observe, pregnant women experience so much back pain because what they are trying to do is to keep balance or to keep the balance. The center of gravity shifted in front because of the added weight, because of the added weight of the baby. Somehow shifted in front and then she might topple over because of that. It will cause rotation, but the muscles at the back will counteract that. It will exert a force so that or to keep the balance of the woman. Okay, before we end our discussion, I will share an implication of this lesson. Now, take note that center of gravity, we, can, we will not topple over if the center of gravity is supported or if our area of support is bigger. So that means when you somehow experience problems and you are unstable, 
you could no longer find how to become stable again, what you need to do is to increase that area of support. How do we increase our area of support? We can have friends, our families, our colleagues, and then we can also look for um, words of encouragement that can also increase our area of support there, so that we will not topple over, we will not become unstable, and we will reach our stability again. Okay, so with that, bye everyone and see you next meeting.